Tuesday Night Flatters in the episode two of episode episode two of Undead of Blood. I really am really am liking where the, the direction of basis anime is basically is going. One thing I definitely do want to mention is that which I never really got a chance to mention based on the very very first episode. A lot of people say a lot of people will probably get turned off basically basically because of the first episode because Dan C is basically kind of like a perf kind of guy. He doesn't really basically doesn't really he doesn't even care and stuff like that because he, he basically got his, his clothes off and stuff like that and and, and stuff. I, I don't know why, maybe that's his kind of style or something like that, that's something that he definitely liked or something like that, or maybe that's something that's just getting used to or something like that, which I really don't, don't even really, I really don't even know really, really much about his backstory. Because I, one thing I, I also want to mention is that I'm kind of curious about what is that, what does that number on his chest really means, 1865? Because I'm kind of wondering, was that the year? Was that the year that he was born in 1865? I'm kind of wondering, based on that, because I'm not really actually 100 percent so sure if he really was born on 1865. I don't know what 1865 means, or maybe 1865 means that means that he was experimented on by by this by this government. Was it called uh, Dunk Dunko or something like that? I think it's called Dunko. It's, it's it's a weird name. It's a weird. It's a weird name. But it's not. I wouldn't say it's really that weird, but I'm really I'm kind of curious about what what does Dunko really actually mean? Because I really don't even. I really don't even know. And one thing I definitely do want to say, I definitely do want to mention is basically is that I think this I think this episode was definitely was very good. Was definitely was very good. But I'm kind of curious about what happened to the to, to the guy that had the sword. Basically, him. I'm not really one hundred percent so sure, so sure if he's if I'm really convinced that he's really dead. I really don't think he's really is not. It could be, but I just don't think he's really is not. I think the guy is probably still alive. I think that guy probably is probably one of the strongest villains of which I definitely do think when it comes based on anime. Now, based in regards, based in regards to that, and Andy and Funko, um, Funko gets to go on their adventure. They get to go. They get to go to based into this place which is called the union which is basically called the union and they have to go up against these other different people where they can put themselves put themselves put themselves basically in in uh, the round table like you know like the, you know like the knights of the round table you know they, they could get they basically get chosen or, or something like that or some, something like that something like that i don't know and basically the union is basically spaces that the basically they have like different people where they can basically fill in is based on stuff I'm not even quite surprised that, that that Annie, you know, pretty much killed, pretty much killed the robot guy. I was, I was, I was pretty quite convinced of that. I didn't really, didn't, th really didn't think so. But I'm not really quite one of so sure if he really is actually dead or not. I don't think he really actually is. Now, basically, with the other guy, that kind of looks like a, I don't know, kind of like a cute kind of guy or something like that. He's, he's, he kind of looks like, kind of looks like he is like a girl or something like that. He has like blue hair. He's all muscle and stuff like that. That's basically all he really actually is, and stuff like that. And I'm really kind of curious about what his motives is and what his motives basically really actually is. But he seems like he's he's the kind of character that that he can predict predict people's movements and stuff like that. It's kind of like like Yu-Gi-Oh, like with, like with Pegasus, where he goes up against Yugi, Yugi, and where Yugi has a hard time trying trying to has a hard time trying to predict where trying to stop you know. Pegasus, where where he can read his mind and stuff like that. So I'm assuming that this guy, that with the blue hair, I'm assuming that this guy is some kind of psychic kind of person because he can be able to predict about, able to predict what the movements is really actually going to do, and what they're really actually going to, what they're what, what they're going to really going to do. But one thing I definitely do want to mention is that I definitely do like his character. I definitely do like his character, but I think his character can be kind of a little bit annoying, also as well too. Because the reason why I'm saying that because because he seems like he's like a guy who is impossible to basically to, to, to basically to to, to uh, defeat. Basically, there's nobody basically out there that can really just basically come up to him and just stop him just like that, you know, stuff like that. And I, I don't think there's I don't think he seems like he's a basically impossible basically kind of guy this kind of guy to beat. But he even he even he doesn't move that quick, but he does move some maybe like not not too fast but slow. Where, where that he can move, where he cannot can cannot be hit. But the question is, the question is, what is his weakness? What is his weakness? We really don't even know. I don't even know what his weakness really actually is, because I really don't know. And I'm kind of curious about what where is his character's base is really going to go. I think he's really going to stick around based in anime, or so. 
I really actually de definitely do. I definitely do think so. And I'm really kind of curious about what his abilities is really are, really actually are. I think he's basically just basically just a character that I think probably keep an eye on. Probably keep an eye on probably later on this series and see what kind of what kind of thing that he's really actually going to do, and see how we're Andy and Funko Funko going to be able to get themselves into basically into basically this union. This union place it's kind of like a like an X Men kind of place or something like that or something where they can help them out and stuff like that. But why do they have to fight union members? Union members just to be on the board, to be on the board, just to join, just to join in. That just makes no sense to me. They could have just they could have just gone in and said maybe just join, or basically they could have done that. But I don't know why Andy wants to go there in the first place. I think the reason why he wants to go there in the first place is because it might be a good fit for Funko. That might be a good fit for her. It might be a good fit for her. Now I want to talk more about Annie, which I never did did not get addressed, which I do apologize, which I did, definitely do apologize. That Andy seems like he's a kind of he's a kind of guy. He's a, he's like a steady kind of guy. He doesn't really he doesn't really care about like what goes on with him or anything like that. Because I remember he was explained to Funko like they did like scientist experiments on him and stuff. And and they basically and they basically really actually did and stuff like that like cut him into little pieces little little pieces. But even though he was not very worried that he was basically going to die, he kind of reminds me basically like Cell basically kind of way, where Cell is kind of like a guy. He's like he's in, he's impossible to really actually to kill because you have to figure out some way where you can kill all his all all his cells. So word that so word that he can't not regenerate. That kind of reminds me reminds me of. Uh, now, uh, of Andy, like being like kind of like Cell, because he can regenerate his body so quickly. Because I I think he does take damage, but I think there's somebody basically out there probably going to probably go stack against him and probably will have a hard time uh, basically go against him. Now, basically, what Funko also still also fall too is still kind of a little confusing about what her powers are really can really can do. But I really am very kind of curious about how strong can she really can be and like. Can she become a major threat, basically in the manga or basically in the anime, or basically both? But I do, but I do see some see some fights, basically, in the manga, which um, because I get these little updates or something like that on my Twitter or X, wherever you want to call it, that uh, that's, that's showing the fights and stuff like that. And I really kind of wonder, like, what's her powers really actually is? But I don't know what kind of powers can she really can do? Can she can she fight back? She's, it seems like she can, but she seems like she's kind of starting out kind of weak. Basically, in the series, that's that's something I really did not like. Basically, basically about her character, but but she be, does begin to build up, just kind of like like a Naruto kind of character, basically with her, because you know Naruto didn't really didn't have really that much much really much juju in that he could or or powers, but he definitely does become a lot more stronger, and he definitely does. But I'm like I'm very curious about where where this anime is gonna gonna go. I definitely do want to continue watching, and I definitely do. So yeah, anyways, that's it for uh, for this anime uh, and review. Tell me what you guys think. You guys like this episode? You guys don't like it? Was it good? Was it bad? Tell me what you guys think. But yeah, anyways, this is on Noix. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to leave your comments below. Give me give me a like or give me a thumbs down or uh, whatever. Yeah, anyways, I love you guys. Take care.